Here at Michigan Family Wellness, we believe chiropractic care and nutritional-based therapies are a foundational part of a healthy family lifestyle. No matter where you're at in the mitten, having a family is such an exciting time of life. So instead of feeling overwhelmed by stress, fatigue, and responsibilities with the kids, we invite you to become part of this empowering community to create happy, healthy families. By providing engaging interviews and practical applications, Dr. Wallner cultivates family health by equipping our listeners with the tools they need to elevate wellness in their own family. Dr. Wallner passionately serves the Michigan community at his chiropractic and nutrition-based practice, where he specializes in pregnancy, pediatrics, and family wellness care. And now, here's your host, Dr. Kyle Wallner. Good day, families, and welcome home. That's right, my name is Dr. Kyle, and this is the Empowering MFW Family, and we are so glad to be with you today. If you are joining us for the first time, I want to thank you for tuning in. The health of you and your family is your number one priority. It is your greatest asset. The best way to have a healthy family is by living a family wellness lifestyle. So if you're looking for efficient, effective, and sustainable ways to elevate your health and the health of your family, then I strongly recommend you make yourself comfortable because we have an amazing show for you today. And before we get to today's episode, let me say a few words as I do every week about Power Performance Gym. Power Performance Gym is dedicated to helping you achieve your best definition of healthy and strong. Power Performance specializes in strength and conditioning for individuals, small groups, and athletic teams, weight and pain management, as well as recovery and nutrition. Everyone at Power experiences a full movement and health analysis to build your blueprint for success targeting your goals. Mention the Michigan Family Wellness Podcast to receive your movement and health analysis as a complimentary gift. Learn more about how Power Performance can help you move, look, and feel better by visiting powergym.com. That's P-O-W-R-G-Y-M.com. Dr. Mark Kukazella is a professor at West Virginia University School of Medicine. As a U.S. Air Force reservist, he designs programs to promote healthier and better running with the U.S. Air Force Efficient Running Project. He has been a national level master's runner, having competed for over 30 years with more than 100 marathon and ultra marathon finishes. Mark is a two time winner of the Air Force Marathon and he is the race director of Freedom's Run Race Series in West Virginia. Mark is the director of the National Running center and educational portal designed to teach healthier running he is also the owner of two rivers treads a center for natural running and walking in his hometown of shepherdstown west virginia dr mark's innovative work and story has been featured in the new york times npr outside magazine running times runner's world air force times the washington post and the journal of the american medical association All right, families, please join me in welcoming Dr. Mark. Welcome, families, to today's episode of Michigan Family Wellness. Once again, my name is Dr. Kyle, and joining me on the podcast today is none other than Dr. Mark Kukuzela. Welcome to the podcast, Doc. It's so great to have you. Well, thank you, Kyle, for having me. It's a beautiful day here in West Virginia, so sitting out on my porch right now. I can definitely resonate with the beauty of West Virginia. My wife and I were just driving through there visiting our friends for a wedding in North Carolina. Um, But yes, Michigan, absolutely beautiful as well. Definitely not as beautiful probably right now in the morning when we're talking uh, as it is over there, but we definitely appreciate just the natural beauty and running and being outside and all of that. There's two questions that I always ask every guest on the podcast here. What does family look like for you? So I've got a wife who's a busy physician. She's actually in Beijing, China right now. She's one of the world's leads on Zika virus, which is, you know, mostly in South America, but the rest of the world wants to know about this as well as Ebola. So she's traveling around Shanghai and Beijing. And I have a 14-year-old son, a 12-year-old daughter, and a wonderful little pound puppy who's probably about eight, give or take a year. And that's my that's my pack. <laughs> so probably not unlike many folks, try to juggle a lot of things, but we have fun. You know, try to do all the family things together every day, eat dinner together, you know, have breakfast together, you know, try to unplug as much as we can. Awesome. I just love those family components. Again, with the Family Wellness Podcast here, just like people to be able to connect to the guests that we have on the show. Dr. Mark, the other question that we always ask is, is there anything that you love about the state of Michigan? Have you ever visited Michigan? You know, I've not visited Michigan, so I'm thinking... Um, gotcha. You know, I had one real quick 
trip through Ann Arbor one time, but that was like back in college. <laughs> right. So, uh, golly, I've not, but I hear wonderful things, especially about the Upper Peninsula in the summer, you know, yes. as far as, you know, national parks. My, my kids have been to 35 national parks with us, and I think there's one up there that's pretty remote. You know, it's an island, isn't it? I don't know if it's a park, but people kind of mm-hmm. go up there and escape. Yep, well, I can but tell yeah, you what so I'm looking I, I, forward to. I don't know much about Michigan, so <laughs> it'll be maybe one of my next trips. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you what I'm looking forward to. Later on this summer, my wife and I are heading up to Pictured Rocks, which is a place up there in the UP. Just some gorgeous scenery with some beautiful rock formations. So we're looking forward to that as well. But Dr. Mark, again, thanks so much for your time this morning joining us on the podcast here. We're going to go ahead and dive into some meat and potato content for today because I've been following you and everything that you've been doing in terms of the minimalist running and the natural running space for quite a while now, for a couple of years. It all started back in the day when I read Christopher McDougall's book, Born to Run, and then kind of got into this whole scene, this whole community with getting my own pair of five finger shoes, starting that acclimation process to a more midfoot or forefoot running style. And then now as a chiropractor, I see a lot of patients that they just get so many injuries from running. And I just really appreciate being able to talk with yourself because you're definitely an authoritative figure in the space, you know, along with the research guys like Dr. Lieberman over at Harvard. So I wanted to actually ask you about just for that, that healthy lifestyle, you know, that family wellness lifestyle, where's a great place to start if someone is looking at getting into running and how to leverage running as part of the healthy lifestyle? Yeah, that's a great question, Kyle, because I view running not as a performance or competitive or type A thing, because I think people can become, you know, amazingly fit and incredibly unhealthy at the same time. And if anyone wants to dive more into that topic, you know, Dr. Phil Mathetone, who's a good friend, also Mm -hmm. a chiropractor, has been writing about this for probably 40 years, you know, so staying healthy and happy and you know, a lot of that's nutrition and running is just part of, you know, a balanced, healthy lifestyle because I think naturally we're born to run and there's something magic about running, you know, not necessarily just as, uh, okay, I'm going to run three miles today, but just the movement of running where you have both feet in the air at the same time that brings mm-hmm. some just, uh, you know, different brain chemical. You know, as, as you probably know, Kyle, people like will fly in or do anything to like, just help me run again. And they're like, if I told a runner that, okay, you can't run anymore, they don't accept that. That's, yeah. you know, no, I, I don't want that. You know, to someone who runs, that's probably the most fearful thing. They could probably lose almost anything in their life other than their family. And running is probably a close second. So I, I think everyone foundationally can relearn how to run. You know, running slow is powerful. So it's not about the speed, but just being able to, Get someone to get both feet in the air at the same time gives mm-hmm. them this joy that for anyone who's a runner, they, they, they know what that is <laughs> and they can't mm-hmm. fully describe it, but it's real. Yeah. And giving them so, hope that they can get there again. You know, so when someone's told not to run, you know, if I can say, look, I think we can figure this out right there. We're on mm-hmm. our way to figure it out. Along with just some of the natural things that make us innately human, our language, being able to communicate, being able to think uh, independently and critically, being able to express ourselves artistically. Tell me if you agree with this, Dr. Mark, but I just feel so strongly that bipedal locomotion or just that art of running is one of the unique expressions of being just innately human. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And and Dan's book is great. So Dan, Dr. Dan Lieberman, he's not a physician. He's a, he's a researcher at Harvard and researches, you know, evolutionary biology. So, you know, the origins of the human species and, you know, so running is really a birthright and running has been part of, you know, possibly human survival, depending on, you know, what you believe, you know, for going back however many millions of years. So yeah, it's evolutionary. It's in our genes. You know, we learn to, you know, not just running, we learn to walk on two feet that achieves many purposes, you know, that probably helped us get to the top of the food chain and survival as it is today. But, you know, we don't need to go read Dan's book. It's great. Sure. He calls most modern illness mismatch diseases where we're living in a world now 
which is mismatched from how we got here. And, you know, I think it's coming home to roost and, you know, all the metabolic degenerative diseases, including plantar fasciitis, you know, I mean, just go down to the mm-hmm. basics of the foot. And if you travel over to West Africa or India where they're just wearing sandals or barefoot, these, they wouldn't even know what plantar fasciitis was. It, it'd exactly. be a foreign word. Yeah, so let's kind of go that direction. Thank you for bringing that up, actually. So there's all these conditions that can come, you know, from doing that continual running, especially the more longer distance running, uh, you know, over time. So what I see clinically in the office as a chiropractor is a lot of low back pain. You mentioned plantar fasciitis, a lot of neck pain, people having issues with their hip extension, things like that. And, you know, again, back to your point, how do you tell a runner to stop running when they're continually injuring themselves? And, you know, we'll do those chiropractic adjustments for their low back and their neck and we'll get them feeling good. And then they go out and they run their, you know, 16, 20, they do their marathons over again. And then they end up injuring themselves, you know, all over again. And that's just frustrating as a clinician because I really want to help them and educate them that, you know, hey, check out some of Dr. Mark's, you know, educational material. Uh, Your YouTube videos are fantastic in terms of showing people how to start with proper form, because like you say, when you have that proper form, then you can do those longer distances and you can stay in that aerobic capacity. And, you know, you're going to not spend so much time at the chiropractic office when you can actually run without hurting yourself. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, exactly. I think, Everyone's an individual, and, and you're a clinician. Everyone needs an individual assessment, you know, so you can watch a lot of YouTube videos and try to self-assess, and I think there's some really good mm-hmm. stuff out there now that lets you do that. So uh, Jay DeSherry, he's a good friend, physical therapist, has an app, you know, Saucony Stride Lab, and you, that's a free app, so you can kind of, with your own phone, do some self-assessment. Similar stuff that we did for the military, there's, we have a, if you go to Natural Running Center, website. There's an Air Force program where we have a number of videos on there for assessment. So people can self-assess, but sometimes that's difficult to do if you're not a clinician. So I have a, a running store, which is now eight years open, which is focuses on really rehab in the foot, not treating it with more support. Um, some people do need different things that will help them because they have a, a, a true dysfunction or structural deformity. So you know, we do individual assessments, but we start at the feet and we try to, you know, we teach short foot posture. So our goal is to try to get the foot back in its natural function and position with things like correct toes. You know, if you have hallux valgus, which is the big toe pointing in, it's really hard to stabilize on one foot because your foot's like a three-legged stool without that one of the legs if your big toe doesn't work. So I think everyone kind of is now, the, the hype is, you know, the hip and the core, but the foot is where it all starts, you know, so if the foot is dysfunctional, nothing else is going to work upstream. So we try to really focus on fixing the foot. You know, if you can't hop on one foot nice and springy, you know, it's going to be hard to run because running is basically hopping on one foot. And if you have a big toe that's pointed in at 45 degrees, imagine mm-hmm. trying to hop on one foot. It just, it just doesn't work. You know, so right. folks have things that got to work around, you know, so that, you know, if you're a clinician out there or parent, even more importantly, the most important thing is not to put your kids in shoes that constrict their toes. You know, you Absolutely. don't want your child's foot to look like a shoe. You want your foot to look like a foot. And, you know, there's a number of exercises that can get people out of that if they're early in, but some people are too far down the road and they need, you know, different adaptations. You know, then we look at, you know, I want people to master the art of running ridiculously slow and soft right. and springy before they run fast. Kind of like if you're going to go to the gym, you're not going to load up the bar until you master the motion. Exactly. We have a wonderful tool called a true form runner. It's a motorless treadmill with a slight curve. Mm-hmm. And you really can't run on that without good posture, without good rhythm, without good balance. You know, so for people that have really poor movement, it's kind of a lie detector. You know, you just put them on that, give them a few cues, give them a few kind of tips, even if you, we have a little harness for their hands so they don't throw their hands way out in front of them. So there's some things you can do that will cue them correctly. And then they figure it out. You know, it's kind of like going to the driving range with a nine iron blade versus a big Bertha. You know, you're going to figure it out. So absolutely, you need some coaching, some cues, 
and then patience, you know, people are type A, you know, so they, right. they want to run more now. So yeah. giving them permission to really back off and then they build it from the ground up. But I think if people have been hurt a long time, constantly chasing the next injury, they're willing to say, okay, let's kind of hard reset. Hip mobility is huge. So many people have really tight hip flexors, glute amnesia. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all the big rocks, but not everyone has one of those, you know, so you always have to identify what, you know, what the holes in the roof are and focus on maybe one or two, not 20 of them. The true form runner, that, uh, you know, motorless uh, machine, does that really discourage the heel strike that a lot of is the major cause for a lot of running injuries? I think it discourages what's called overstriding. So you can okay. have a beautiful, perfect stride and touch gently on your heel. Okay. So I think if you were to film someone, Kyle, the thing you're going to really look for is kind of this overstride angle, so to speak. So if the shin angle is so ideally, the shin's going to be perpendicular to the ground when you touch down. Now, you could touch gently on your heel. You could touch midfoot. You could touch forefoot. But if that kind of means you're running over the ground, not into the ground. Now, if you land in a checkmark position, you know, knee-locked and ankle dorsiflexed, meaning your foot is pointed up, mm-hmm. you know, if you're listening to this right now, lock your knees out, kind of point your toes up in the air, you know, it's called dorsiflexing the foot, and just try to hop up and down. You can't. So you want to land in the springy fashion. So it's really hard to overstride on the true form because the thing just stops, <laughs> you know, right, it's just boom, right. you know, you, you can't make it move. Yeah. So I think there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, foot strike, but the foot strike, you know, is probably 10% of it. You know, you got to look at the whole, you know, the whole movement pattern. So mm-hmm. when I read a study on 10 people of whether they land on, you can land on the ball of your foot, completely over striding you don't know, have some of the highest what we call loading right. rates measured right you know and that's where that that rapidity of deceleration you know kind of how hard and fast you hit the ground you know versus you know hitting the ground like a like a spring which you absorb the energy and it returns yeah i was just saying you talk a lot about elastic recoil in your videos which i really appreciate and yeah just shortening your stride you know kind of getting off your heels leaning forward from that ankle joint so that you're not bending at the hips or the knees too much yeah just kind of going from there and using those simple points to kind of launch forward into really leveraging that elastic recoil to become more efficient and effective you know with your running form and then your breathing takes over and you really at least in my experience you can really enter into this flow state where you're not really thinking about too much what's going on your body's just kind of on plane essentially like kind of in automatic control yeah once you know you're trying to get people to go from you know unconscious incompetence meaning they just throw their shoes on and they go run and they get hurt and they want an injection and then once they start thinking about this stuff that you know, kind of conscious competence. Okay, I've got to think about my balance, my rhythm, my body position. And then once you've been moving that way long enough, it becomes, you don't need to think about it. And that's a long, some people are quick motor learners. So really what we're doing, Kyle, is almost training what's called a homunculus, which is, you mm-hmm. know, when we did anatomy, it's, it's the mapping of the brain, you know, so the brain is mapped to make you move without you thinking about every single muscle that's going to activate so it's motor mapping, and it takes, just like if you're a golfer and you keep slicing it, you know, if you go to the range and keep swinging the same way and slicing it continually, you're mapping it into that bad pattern. So you have to figure out what the right pattern is and, you know, how many repetitions in a correct pattern will it take to map your brain. I think kids is probably a little quicker. They're more plastic, and <laughs> adults, you know, might be never, and you constantly need a cue because your brain is so mapped to an old pattern. You know, just mm-hmm. how people stand and sit, you know, as a motor pattern, you know, you see, just watch them how, and, you know, they're in a poor position and mm-hmm. continuing the poor position just reinforces the poor position. So mm-hmm. you want to make sure people are practicing correctly, not incorrectly. And Dr. Mark, I would be remiss if I did not at least mention this once, once here in our conversation. The reality is running is just like any other form of exercise. It is a form of stress. So sometimes what I see clinically, actually more often than not, is you have a person or an individual or even a family that, you know, they're already living a pretty stressful lifestyle between their uh, work life, between their career, between their family, all their extracurricular things with the kids. 
and then they want to go out and run 5, 10, 15 miles and they're just really draining their adrenal glands. They're just draining their, yep. you know, resistance and their resiliency. And even if they're doing all the right things, you know, their, their visceral organs just cannot uh, take that much stress. So you, you really want to listen to your body. You mentioned it earlier. You got to have patience and then you got to be smart, just like with any other, whether it's strength training or aerobic exercise or specifically with natural running. If you do the correct form and you're consistent and you're congruent and you listen to your body, it's going to work for you rather than work against you. Yeah, that's so true. I think, you know, if you're a collegiate athlete, Olympic athlete, you know, your stress is your sport and your recovery is the other part of the day. You know, maybe not so much for a collegiate athlete because they've got classes. That's why so many of them get fried and hurt. But I view running like this. And if, if people just remember this, I think they can figure it out. So I view every single run I do as a recovery run, meaning, it, you know, if someone gets a treatment, a massage, you know, sits in a hot tub, takes a nap, eats a good meal, you know, does something, goes to take a walk with the dog. If you do something for recovery, you should feel better when you come back than when you left out the door. And if people that are busy view running like that, then they've got it figured out. So I can't mm -hmm. remember the last time that I didn't feel better after a run than before a run. And if I didn't, it'd be time to kind of readjust to be okay, I feel real. what's going on this week. I haven't slept on call, you know, maybe, you know, even cut it back even more. But basically, if you just go out and run every day for recovery, it's all good, you know. And some days, you know, your recovery run might be a little quicker because you're rested and you feel good. And that really feels good to move quicker. And some days you just need to move the body, you know, ridiculously slow. And yeah you feel better when you come back. So just go out the door and with that as your goal, and it's really hard to get hurt or stress your adrenal glands if that's how, whether it's running or any type of activity you do. You know, I still can run fast marathons, but yeah. if I went out every day and ran like all these scheduled people, they want you to do all these tempo runs at marathon pace, I'd be destroyed. Yeah. You know, I don't think I would get to the starting line and, um, but it, we're all an experiment of one, you know, and I'm not the first one to mm -hmm. say that. But if you want to stay in the game, you know, this year I've had my 30th straight year under three hours for a marathon. That's incredible. So somehow whatever I'm doing, you know, with the trials and <laughs> errors I've made, you know, you figure it out. Dr. Mark, you're definitely an inspiration to me personally. I know you're an inspiration to so many people out in the minimalist running, the natural running community, the marathon community, uh, everything with running. Where is a great place to go if I'm just starting out getting into learning more about running? Yeah, Kyle, I think we've got some really simple stuff out there on the Natural Running Center webpage. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a little tab that says Run RX and there's different little components there. There's drills, building endurance, even some schedules that if you just want some type of a template, strength and mobility, you know, so we've got different areas there that you can just read the basics of. Um, so it's a good place to start. Find a mentor in your community. So if you have a good health practitioner, a good athletic trainer, physical therapist, because I think people can watch all these videos right. and still they could have a completely messed up foot. And no one's, you know, no one's been able to tell them that. You know, I'm cautious against going to your regular doctor for this stuff because they, we get no training in this stuff in medical school. So the reflex of most regular physicians is treat the symptom, not identify the cause. You know, mm -hmm. we're trained to treat illness, not prevent it. So just make sure if you are a runner that your health practitioner is a runner. I kid you not. I mean, I think maybe that's what we're like. If they don't look like they know how to move right. and they're going to give you advice on how you should move, you know, just caution because it, it might not be true. I think everyone can be rehabbed out of their dysfunction versus treating their symptom, you know, whether it's with a running injury or a chronic disease. I mean, I think we want to rid the world of chronic disease, not treat it. So you have to find someone who's willing to work with you to get rid of the illnesses, you know, or else, you know, it's mm -hmm. going to be a, a sad story ahead of you. You know, I see it every day as you do too. Healthy people don't need chronic disease medicine, even if right. they're managing their conditions. You know, you're not healthy. The goal is to get healthy. Well, Dr. Mark, I wish we had more time. I wish we could do just hours and hours talking about the benefits and value of running, of natural form, things like that. 
once again, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast today, uh, for your time, for your um, value that you provided to people. Just for those listening, we're going to have a link to everything we mentioned here. We're going to link to some of those YouTube videos we were talking about, some of those resources from the Natural Running Center. And if you want to contact Dr. Mar directly, we'll be able to uh, have people do that as well. Really appreciate your time, Dr. Mark. Thanks again. Enjoy the week. All right, families, what'd you think? We'd love to get your feedback. If you would like to email me about anything you've heard on this or any previous edition of the Family Wellness Lifestyle Podcast, you may do so by writing Dr. Kyle at michiganfamilywellness.com and take full advantage of the Family Lifestyle Audio Library at michiganfamilywellness.com. Connect with us on social media at Michigan Family Wellness. Thanks so much for tuning in, families. Have an awesome week. And remember, we can do far more together than we could ever do a Part. Now that you've been equipped with the latest in family wellness solutions, we want to encourage you to apply these strategies right away. But the thing is, there's still so much to learn. Connect with Dr. Walner's chiropractic and nutrition office by going to michiganfamilywellness.com and click the newsletter sign up button to join the informative and supportive community of chiropractic wellness. You will also receive as a gift from Dr. Walner a copy of Michigan Family Wellness Solutions an invaluable resource containing dynamic tools to elevate family health and vitality. Michigan Family Wellness wants to thank you for being part of today's podcast. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and give us a five-star rating and review. 